Good morning guys! Welcome back to a video here on 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 Unplugged EV. I'm back! Unplugged EV, the car channel. Remember that? I had to watch the last four episodes of my own videos last night to actually catch up and remember what I have filmed and where I have stopped. Jeez, this neighbor is so noisy. With his stupid two-stroke machines he has got. All the garden tools are two-stroke. My ones are all electric already. Anyway, so I watched the last four videos when we did the off-grid charging challenge here with the Teslander. That was uh, three months ago. And we tried to charge the Tesla only from the off-grid system, right? No other grid power, no other charging stations were allowed, just the off-grid system. And unfortunately, it was really, really, well, cloudy this week when I did the challenge. And we couldn't really charge the car much. One, two, three kilowatt hours per day, that was all. And we could see the kilometers, the range went down every day, basically. But at this point of time, I had only limited solar power available. There was only a 1.2 kilowatt system on the roof. And because of the clouds we had, um, well, this was just not enough to deliver enough power to recharge the car. And if you remember, we also had other loads in the garage connected to the battery as well to the system, like the irrigation pump, all the garage appliances, the workbench. You know, it wasn't just only the car. And we could have recharged the car from the off-grid system as much as the battery would deliver and then recharge the rest from the grid. This would be already a good achievement because then we would have replaced some of the energy used by the car from our solar system. And if we do this and say we can replace like 20 or 30 percent from solar and the rest is still coming from grid, well, this is already a good achievement then, right? But this was not part of the challenge. The challenge was to charge from off-grid only. And as you know, as I just said, it didn't quite work because of the bad weather situation at this point of time and just not enough solar to generate all this energy we need. So now in the meanwhile, if you follow the Off-Grid Garage YouTube channel here, you know I have upgraded the solar system on top of the roof so we have um, solar panels on both sides of the roof now. Yeah, there you can see it. And now I'm in the very comfortable situation to have 4.1, 4, 4,050 watts peak power here available on the off-grid garage to charge this battery. The battery is still the same, you know, we haven't changed the battery yet. So we still have the 14 kilowatt hours available energy we have, but we have far more power now on the roof to recharge this battery. So around mid of September, I think it was, I changed over from grid charging to off-grid char charging completely because we had already so much energy that the battery was full after a couple of hours. I managed to harvest around 19 to 20 kilowatt hours a day now with this four kilowatt system here on the garage. 20 kilowatt hours a day. And you know, we are using about five to six kilowatt hours only for charging the car. Here, here. This is the statistic of the Sonoff connected to our grid charger. And in September, for this portion, we have used 104 kilowatt hours of energy from the grid. And then you can see there's nothing anymore afterwards because I solely charged from the off-grid system here. And this is from October, 34 kilowatt hours from the grid for a whole month. So I recharged the car to 80% from the grid power here but the rest of the day is for commuting and daily usage of the vehicle. No power at all. This is a quite amazing achievement already, I think. And you may remember the good old char charge get. I made a couple of videos about this in the past here. This is the EVSE they have sent me to test. I don't even know if they went into production or so, but this one is fully working, operational and everything. And here, as a little secret, I want to tell you, I have set up a 32 amp single phase socket already here and this is a little mount here where the EVSE will be sitting on and then we can plug this in here and charge the car from here from the off-grid system and I also have the possibility to charge here from the on-grid system. 
depending what energy is available, I plug in to the off-grid system or I plug into the grid system. I can still charge my car just fine, whatever energy source is available. And well, with this beautiful, sunny, hot Australia weather here, you know, a few clouds, but that's fine. I usually charge, if I'm at home, I usually take the extension lead here and just um, charge the car during the day from the solar directly. So I don't even use the battery at all. And then we take the um, 10 amp adapter, plug this in, take the mobile charging unit, connect this in, light comes on. I'm sure the car wakes up now and starts charging. There we go, click, click. Yeah, green light flashing, car is charging. And this is now from the off-grid system. And yeah, this plugs into the garage, yeah, follow the lead. This plugs into here, and now we are charging. And you can hear the inverter, right? So, and if we have a look at the app now, we can see car is perfectly fine charging. It will take six hours to charge to 60% from where I am. I'm not concerned, I'm not going anywhere today. And with the new app now, we can also change the charging speed here on the app directly. See, it sits on eight amps. 8 amps out of 8, this is the maximum we can charge with the 10 amp adapter. But I can also lower this down to 7, 6 or even 5 amps. And then respectively it takes longer to charge the vehicle. So on 5 amps it would now take um, 6 hours and 30, I think, yeah it's still calculating. 8 hours 15. See it charges only with 7 kilometers per hour at the moment here. But as you can see, we've got a cloud coming in at the moment here and the solar is not delivering that much energy at the moment. So I can just throttle down the car charging accordingly. And then when the sun comes up again, we can bump it up again to seven or eight amps and charge full speed with this adapter. And also, since I made these last three videos, um, I have now access to the Victron remote portal management portal i can see on my mobile phone what the actual solar system does how much power we get from solar how much power goes out and what the state of charge of the battery here of the stationary battery inside the garage is at the moment so i can see all this on my mobile phone now which i couldn't see when i did the last couple of videos then because we always needed to go home and then it was a big surprise that the battery was not charged. <laughs> but now we can see this perfectly fine on the mobile phone. So there's no surprise anymore when you come home. And at the moment, the solar delivers 850 watts, but we are using two kilowatts from the system here because um, yeah, the pool pump is connected to the off-grid system as well, just as a side note. And 800 watts coming from solar, the rest is coming from the battery at the moment to deliver this energy to the car. Here we can see the car is charging with 1.4 kilowatts. This is the 5 amp setting and the rest is being used here inside the garage for other applications and loads. And we just need to wait for the sun coming back now. Just want to show you how this looks like then down here. Because the, um, the solar system is more than powerful enough to run the pool pump, charge the vehicle, run the off-grid garage and also charge our off-grid battery all at the same time. That is amazing, right? Four kilowatt used solar system. I know you would probably say, well, charging on five amps, which is the lowest setting the Tesla can actually handle before it shuts down charging altogether. This is not very effective. And you are probably right. You may have seen my video, which I link up here. Um, I have tested all the charging speeds for the Tesla and the efficiency of it. We compared what we actually put into the charger from the, um, from the AC side and then compared this with what actually lands inside the battery of the vehicle using the Scan My Tesla app. And we tested all kinds of charging speeds here with the mobile adapter as well as the three phase power at the university and the 50 kilowatt DC charging as well as the supercharging efficiency speed. And to sum this up quickly, the slower you charge, the less efficient it is, at least on AC. So these five amps now is the less efficient method to charge the Tesla.
But you know, on the other hand, the energy is totally free, comes from the battery, comes from the solar system here. We are not paying anything for the energy. If I have only 80% efficiency while charging instead of 85 or even 90 at a higher charge rate, who actually cares, you know? I just set the car on fire for 6 amp and let it trickle charge during the day. Especially in these conditions here with the clouds, you know? There, there's always there's always the battery necessary to buffer your energy used by the car because the sun is not always there. So here at the moment the majority of the energy is coming from the battery and only a small portion from the solar directly. But as soon as this... There was no cloud before when I started filming here. It was sunny and hot and... As soon as the sun is coming out now, you will see we've got so much energy available, it can handle everything at the same time. And we still have solar panels sitting there, so we will expand the solar system here on the roof in the next couple of weeks, months anyway. Um, we're probably ending up with like 8 kilowatt peak here on the roof, on the garage, and then I can perfectly charge the vehicle here with 8 amps. We also, as you may know from the other channel, we also have more batteries here and there is another delivery on the way. We will end up with around a little bit over 40 kilowatt hour of storage here in this shelf then. So we have enough storage, enough solar then to charge these batteries during the day and then I've got enough power to really charge the vehicle overnight and supply power to all my other loads here in the garage. And as I said in these videos, it was more like a test to prove the concept that it actually works. So I would be able to charge the car. Not that we have enough energy from the systems, but proof of concept, it works. You can charge the car from your solar and battery system. See here with the clouds at the moment, only 500 watts from solar and 1.5 kilowatts coming from the battery. So we are discharging the battery now, but we are at a comfortable level here of 65%. So no problem. And as soon as the sun is coming back, it gets recharged anyway then. You will see this in a second. Once this stupid cloud is going. I think, I think the sun is coming back. Oh yes. Oh yes, there it comes. And now the solar panels are nice and cool. And we will see a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of, oh wow. Come on, it should be more than 1500, it's still a bit cloudy. Here you can see we are getting like a thousand watts from solar and a thousand watts from the battery. There's still some clouds, I can't believe it. The sun is right there, it needs to go all the way there where it's blue. Okay, it takes another minute or two. Yo, but now it's really coming. 3.7 kilowatts from a 4, 3.8 from a 4 kilowatt system. Isn't that good? So now we've got this coming from solar and this going into the car and these are the other loads we have and we are still charging the battery with 1.7 kilowatts here. So I can now go into the Tesla app here and bump up the charging speed to 8 amps full power. See this this 4 kilowatt system is already is already enough to charge the car and the battery here. And I know what you're saying now. I said well Andy get a seppi. It does all this automatically for you. If clouds are coming it throttles down or even stops charging and if the clouds going away it bumps up the charging speed again and the car is always charging at the maximum rate whatever kind of sunshine you get at the moment, right? And potentially it could be a solution. The the problem here is the, the Tesla goes to sleep if it does not charge. So if the SEPI turns off because we are under the threshold of the car being able to charge, the, the Tesla would go to sleep, right? And then if the sun comes out, the Tesla wakes up again, starts charging again, throttles up, throttles down, cloud comes, car turns off, car goes to sleep. So it would, it would go to sleep and wake up a lot of times. I don't, I don't like this situation. I would rather have the car being turned on and charging or being turned off and sleeping. But this constant waking up and sleeping again. So I, I don't know, maybe just me what I think. Well, if you have a Tesla and a SEPI charging system, let me know in the comments down below if this works for you. If you have the trouble with these um, clouds, these scattered 
sky here now that the car actually goes to sleep when a big cloud is coming and then wakes up afterwards and starts charging again and again and again and again. Well, with the battery now in place, um, it keeps charging. It uses the energy from the battery then in case if there's a cloud. And if the sun is coming back, it recharges the battery and keeps the car charging on a constant speed, you know. I, I like this more. All right, guys, I think this is now a wrap to our, well, off-grid charging situation here with the car. I'm so far, let's last couple of three months or so, I have almost entirely charged the vehicle from the off-grid system here. So it works perfectly fine. Yeah, guys, and it looks like I'm back on the Unplugged EV YouTube channel here with more videos about the test lander, about charging, about trips. We are going actually on a holiday trip on Sunday this week and I'll take the Unplugged channel with me as well. I'll show you how I prepare my car and of course we have to talk about recent updates. There are so many updates we haven't talked about yet. I'll, I'll do a little bit of a video I need to show you. It is insane. And as well I had my first service appointment with Tesla with the Tesla Lander here. I want to talk about as well a little bit and share my experience with that what they have done, how long it took, how much they charged me for it, for a service. That was the first service after two years. So I thought, well, it's worth now going to the service center with a car, getting it checked through and see what they find. And of course, I had a couple of um, complaints as well here. As you may know from other videos previously, there are still some issues which haven't been fixed since I got the car two years ago. It is made in America. But all this and more will come here soon on the Unplugged TV YouTube channel. Again, we are back. I'm reviving the channel. I'm really looking forward to make more videos here on the car channel as well, because there's so much to talk about and so much happened in the last couple of months. And I said, oh, it would be good to make a video, but I haven't got time. I'm so busy here in the off-grid garage with all the battery and solar setup and I'm doing three or four videos a week here on the channel and there was no time to do anything else. But I'm scaling this one just a tiny bit back to have room for a video here and there on the Unplugged TV YouTube channel as well. As per the wishes of my Patreons, please do more videos here on the channel. Okay guys, so far this video from today and this is Andy from Unplugged TV Australia signing off. You stay charged, stay safe, and we will see us again in the next video coming out soon, soonish, soon, right? Okay, see you then guys, bye bye.